Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, where we discuss all sorts of things Germanic heathenry related. My name is Jesse. I am your host. Let's get into it. Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, brought to you by electronics and technology and myself. Glad you all could listen, tune in, watch, participate in the ways that you do. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget, smash that like button, subscribe, share, upvote, follow, whatever the thing that you're listening or watching this on um, elicits for you to engage uh, with, then uh, please do so. Uh, today's episode is a um, going to be about the land vetir, or the land whites. You may hear that term, vetir, um, or whites, W-I-G-H-T-S, uh, used interchangeably to describe these uh, spiritual beings. So we're going to talk about it today. Um, and it... Uh, the, the 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 topic itself is actually something that I've surprised I'm, I'm surprised that I haven't dived deeper or dove deeper, jumped in deeper, whatever, uh, delved deeper like the dwarves delve deep um, into this topic. I've mentioned you know this in in many other like Midgard musings uh, videos. I've I've talked about the topic of the Vatir and our relationships. Um, how how you know humans and, and the Vatir interact and, and co-mingle and cohabitate in other podcasts as well. But I've never, uh, from what I can remember or recall, you know, really took a took a whole episode into discussing this topic. And uh I can't remember who or where. Um I, I saw a comment or or a message. I actually scoured through my various social platforms to see where the comment or where the message had uh, come up on. And, and unfortunately, I don't remember where or who sent this um, question in or, or, or a comment in, but it, uh, it made me think about it. And again, I can't even remember what the question, what the comment was, but I know it had had something to do with the Vatir. And uh, I thought, well, what, what, what better way to, go into this topic than to podcast about it. So, um, um, again, I apologize for whoever it is, if you're listening or watching this, that, um, you know, sparked this conversation. If I knew who it was, I would definitely um, credit you for it. Um, so apologies for that. Um, but here we are. Uh, here we are talking about it. Um, and the, the, the topic specifically is going to be um, on that of honoring the Vatir, or venerating the Vatir, or in, in some sort of way interacting and, and working with the Vatir. So I mentioned, you know, moments ago that this term Vatir or whites gets used interchangeably. And that's what the Vatir are. Um, in other uh, pagan practices or in other uh, cultures, you may hear um, things being referred to as like the Fey. Or, or fairies, or, you know, um, uh, other terms in different cultures. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with what other cultures may call these things, but I think a lot of cultures, if not every, you know, uh, ancient culture, at least at one point in time, has a concept of what in, in Germanic paganism um, gets called vetir or whites. Um, so these are, these are spirits. These are unseen spiritual beings that exist in the land, um, and, you know, around us. Um, and so that's what, what we're talking about. If you're another pagan of, of, of a different variety and, and you use the term like fae or fairy or, or any other sort of, you know, a word to describe these beings, then, then you can possibly relate to that. And I know different cultures have different folklore surrounding these beings and, and, and such and, and how they um, exist or interact with, with humans, mankind, right? 
Um, but I'm going to talk today specifically around what I do know, at least uh, the limited knowledge that I have, and, and my experience with working um, and, and interacting with the land vitir. So um, to start with, um, there, there are some source materials that uh, will be annotated, first of all, in the description and show notes of the podcast that you can you know, look into yourself. Um, but I'm going to just um, do a quick reference uh, to some source materials of uh, where the, we know of, at least, that the Northern European people, specifically in Scandinavia, uh, the Scandinavian countries had uh, this mentioned in, in some of these, um, again, sources. I'm going to start with, first of all, the uh, the Icelandic Book of Settlement, or what is also called the Land Namabok. Um, somewhere in that book, I have it, I just, uh, it's, it's eluding me where specifically, but somewhere in that book, there was actually at one point in time a law passed in, in Iceland where... Um, the, the bow of ships, the front of the ships, um, should not have these dragon heads on them, something along those lines, right? Something along the lines of the, you shouldn't have these, uh, or could not, it was against the law uh, at the time, to have these, you know, fearful-looking, menacing-looking um, images on the bows of your ships because when they would sail in and approach the shores, these images, these likenesses of mythological beasts of, of, of a frightening nature could scare the vitir or frighten the vitir and cause them to uh, either leave or, or, or not be present and active in the land. Now, why would something like that need to be a law at the time? And it goes back to, again, the, the, the local or regional beliefs of these people. So the vitir are generally uh, understood as being some sort of protectors or guardians, as it were, of the land. They are active spirits um, of the unseen nature. You know, they're, 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 they're not visible to the, to the physical eye. Um, and they have a place in, in the land to, again, protect it from harm, to protect the land from, uh, especially when it comes to, like, agricultural things. Uh, the people believe that um, as, as long as the Vetir are pleased and happy that they would, you know, have success with, with their crops, that the land would flourish, that there would be peace, you know, that there wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be raided or invaded or, or have, you know, these sorts of things. So there was, there was a, a generalized belief that, you know, you don't want to piss the vitir off. <laughs> you don't want to upset them and you want to keep them happy. So what are ways to keep them happy is in, in this particular case, in the Landama book, there was a law in Iceland that, there, you know, no, the bows of ships should not have these appearances of dragons on them because that could frighten the vitir and you know drive them away. Um, there's also another source, um, I believe it's the saga of King Olaf Tyrgvason. Tyrgvason. Again, that'll be linked in the description below and the annotated in the podcast show notes. Uh, but in that the saga of King Olaf, um, there uh, is a mention of uh, the king was looking to invade Iceland. I believe it was Iceland. Um, but he was looking to invade, and uh, as the saga goes, and again, this is like a a rough um, retelling of it. It's it's don't you know? Go find it yourself. I'll have it linked down below. Uh, but in the saga, the the king sends a wizard, um, or has a has a has a wizard employed under his um, under his retinue to uh, go and investigate the landscape to see where the best ways uh, to invade would be. Um, and this wizard, under the king's retinue, um, journeys off in the form of these shapeshifts into the form of a whale um, and is, you know, basically doing a recon um, of, of the shorelines and, and the areas surrounding Iceland. And uh, each place that this wizard in the form of a whale reaches, he is met by different Vetir and the Vetir take on different forms. There's a giant, there's a bull, there's a like a dragon, and I think an eagle, right? Um, and so essentially, uh, every place that he goes in, in these, these four corners, the the it is it is determined, right, that uh, it, the land is protected by these various forces, and he's met with in opposition um, by these 
forces by these spiritual beings that make themselves manifest to this wizard in the form of a whale as these various creatures of, you know, either mythological or natural, um, you know, form. And so um, the, the, the interesting thing about that is that those Vaitir, the, 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 the likenesses that the Vaitir took form of, are represented even still in an Icelandic coat of arms um, right up here. Um, this, this image right here, again, for those listening, um, I'll, I'll, I'll provide source material in the links uh, in, in the description or show notes for you guys to click on this image. Um, that represents the this this old saga, you know, semi old saga at least. So, um, and then I've also uh, learned of of other sources. I forget if it's Iceland or Sweden or, or something. Basically, where um, uh, this 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 person, and again, if it's a saga, it's going to be linked down below, or it's going to be annotated below. But there's a story, perhaps a saga. Uh, of someone who was visited in a dream um, by, and again, this, again, the, 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 whether it's a saga or whether it's a more modern story or retelling, I, I want to say it's a more modern thing. Um, again, it's either Iceland or Sweden, but this 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 guy has a dream where um, there's 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 work that needs to be done, excavation. They're they're going to tear down a part of the land. Um, the authorities, the government, or, or something like that at the time, were going to do some sort of modification to the land. And this man has a dream where uh, he is approached by this um, by this being, I don't know if it's a woman, or I think it's a woman if I remember correctly, uh, where uh, she tells him in his dream that um, don't do anything until we can move out. Um, and it's specifically centralized around this rock uh, or, or, or large boulder or something like that, like, you know, so so, uh, the, you know, the man tells the the, the authorities and, and and whatnot. Um, hey, we can't do anything because of this dream that I had, and they're like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. And I don't know. There's there's a there there's some aid that the guy gets if it is from another agency, another government, or something where they 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 hold off long enough, um, uh, or for a long enough period of time where this this man has another dream and he is he is revisited. By this, uh, by this, by this force, by this spirit, by this woman, by this whatever, whoever she is, that says, "Okay, it's good. We're, we've we've relocated. You can, um, you can do what you need to do now." Um, so there is, there's, you know, you can, you may call it superstition. You may call it, you know, you know, the the beliefs or the regional folklore. Um, but there is definitely a lot of um, uh, evidence. That in in Northern Europe and in Scandinavia as, as well, there's uh, this specialized focus specifically to the spirits of the land. Now, this has nothing to do with the realm of the gods. You know, this has nothing to do with what I would refer to as the divine or the sacred realms, because the gods and, and the sacred, the divine, you know, uh, that that is on its own level, and that is on its own thing. What we are talking about here today are the Vaitir, the spirits that exist in profane space. So they are, we are cohabitants of Midgard with these spirits, these forces, right? These unseen beings. And, um, you know, so uh, I've seen comments on, on when, I, when I announced that this was going to be the podcast uh topic for this week, you know, I saw comments from a lot of people saying, you know, this is a topic that needs to be discussed more, you know, thank you, I'm excited, right, a lot of positivity, um, and I want to say thank you to everyone that, that did respond in such a way, because I'm excited to talk about this, and I agree, you know, I, I've, I've agreed for a long time that um, there's not enough focus, uh, to me at least, not from what I see, there's not enough focus, up to recently especially, of these types of things, of, of how we interact and how we deal with the things that are literally right in our backyards, you know, that, that exist in the same space and time perceptions that we do, you know, so we're not talking about uh, uh, entering into a, a ritual with the divine and, and creating sacred space. We're, we are talking about dealing with, with forces and spirits that exist in profane space. Even though that we, we can't see them, they still exist. And that 
is one part that I want to eventually touch on here is today is that what we can or cannot see doesn't, you know, negate its its existence, you know? Um, so, uh, there's also, uh, is before I move on, there's also one other particular source that uh, a lot of people may be familiar with, especially if you're a Germanic or Norse, you know, Germanic heathen, Germanic pagan, Norse pagan, whatever, Northern European flavor of, of variety of paganism, uh, the saga of Egil Skolagrimson, uh, or Egil saga. Um, in that saga, Egil, I believe it's Egil, right? He he uh, erects a neath pole or neath stong, um, and the 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 the, the neathing pole or the neath stong is a uh, it's 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 meant to frighten, deter. And, and almost in a way curse the land, you know. Um, and and I think there's other source materials that 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 make mention of neath songs. And there's even things of of a more modern, uh, you know, reconstruction of that. Um, the the purpose is is served the same way, right? It's it's intended to be a deterrent, a a curse in a way. Um, and in this saga of Eagle Skelligrimson, you know, this this knee song that he that he erects and and faces. Uh, towards the king, uh, the king's land or whatever is 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 meant to be a a, a frightening thing to scare the vitir off and to piss the vitir off and and to make that realm, you know, unpeaceful and and unfruitful and and barren and all these sorts of things, right? So, again, multiple examples that we have that we know of at least of different time at different times and in different ways uh, that that people knew. Or, or, or had a belief that they shared space with unseen um, spirits, and that just because you couldn't see them does not mean that they are less powerful or that they are not in any sort of way less active or present. And so how do we, you know, push, push that into, into a modern heathen approach, into modern paganism and, and the way that we do things now? Because again... So, wait, so many of the things that were done way back in the day um, may not be practical or, or in the same way, you know, uh, the, the, the way that, that things can be done now. However, when it comes to the Vaitir, um, I, I think that it is, it is absolutely uh, an important part of, of, of our pagan beliefs, regardless of, you know, what you want to label yourself as or, or, or call yourself, um, how we... Uh, interact and, and deal with these unseen spirits is, is, is a very important thing. And I'll tell you why. Um, I believe that um, they were here first, you know? We're guests in their house, as it were. Like, when we see so many things happening in the, in the modern world now, you know, we see these um, terrible disasters, you know, train derailments and, and explosions and... and um, you know all these various these things that that hurt the land, you know, um, uh, just the way that humans have have be become. Not everybody, but you know, uh, on a large scale, the way that the human race, you know, the human species have become so reckless with the way that uh, the land is is respected, beloved honored right it's it's terrible and and it's and it shows right when we mistreat the land you know again they were here first we came in and we tore down the forests we 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 you know laid waste to land that you know so that way so that way what we could build these cities and we could pile people asses to elbows um, and, and, and build businesses and, and grow, you know, great modern wonders and all these things that, you know, you could look back and you know, say that they were, you know, advances of technology and advances of the human race and so on and so forth. And, you know, yeah, to some degree you can go, you know, uh, there, there's been some good and some benefit out of it all. Um, but when, but when it comes to the things of like the, the, the destructive nature that we, you know, a lot of the, the human race seems to have no care or concern for the ramifications for the consequences 
that result in mistreating the spirits of the land that were here first, that we invaded in a way, you know, and, and, and took over. So how do we rectify it? How do we fix it in a way? How do we, how do we make the Vitir happy again? I think it starts at the, at the very basic individual level, you know, and when one person starts something, it, uh, it inspires other people to start doing things. And then when more people start doing it, it gets noticed and the word spreads and the awareness is made, you know, that much more visible and, and, and you get more people jumping on board and, and doing things that collectively result in a positive outcome. Um, there's another channel here on, on YouTube. There's another gentleman on social media. Um, as a, he's, a, he's a doctor, I believe a Danish doctor, uh, Rune Rasmussen. He's, Nordic Animism is his channel and his um, Facebook persona, right? The, the, the page. Uh, but yeah, he's, he's, he's big on in, uh, Nordic Animism. Um, and, and that translates back to, you know, our connection to you know, uh, natural existence, right? With, with the animals, with the, with the land and, and all these sorts of things. Um, he's, he's got a really great, um, he's got really great content, really very knowledgeable. Um, so I encourage you guys to check it all out. Uh, Nordic animism. I'll, I'll link his, his stuff down in the comments too. Um, and in the description and show notes. So you guys can check all um, his stuff out, but he's one of the ones that I see doing, you know, using his platform, to raise awareness of, you know, we got to take care of the land. We got to take care of our home, right? Because we all live here, um, and and really and, and raising awareness for that sort of thing. And again, it's it's one person using a platform that he has a great voice in to share that and raise that awareness. So. Uh, you know, I think about this type of thing, and you know, a lot, you know, some people were saying, you know, this 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 conversation needs to be made more of. There needs to be more talks about this, and and I do agree because again, these are the these are the forces that we share space and time with. So on the individual level, right? I'm talking about all these things. What can we do? How can we do it? It starts with you. It starts with me, and it starts with us. Um, wherever we are, wherever we live, you know, for me, um, I live in a um, a, a fairly residential, you know, area, and it's only getting built up more and more. There's more apartments being built. There's more condos being built. There's more land being decimated to build more housing. You know, uh, we are overpopulated here in, in, in this part of Tennessee where I live. Um, it's evident by the rise in crime, the rise in um, just accidents, you know, tragedies, that sort of thing. And I have to, you know, I can't help but wonder if the, as a result of these things, like, yeah, sure. You know, the more people you put into a central, uh, you know, a concentrated area, you know, yes, these things are going to increase, you know, crime is going to go up and all these sorts of things, these problems are going to arise, but where else can we look, right? We, we are tearing apart this land and have we, infuriated the Vitir so much that their protection that was here once before has abandoned us. We have been abandoned by the guardians of this land. And so it's no wonder that, you know, accidents are happening and deaths are occurring and, and such tragedies and things are happening. We, 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 we are outside of the, the protection of these spirits that we've, the, you know, whose homes we've destroyed. That's where I think. That's what I think. So what I look to focus on is in, in my little spot, my little place, you know, is to keep the land happy, take care of the land. How do we do that? Well, we can, um, and, and how I do it, I should say, is, um, you know, first of all, keep, a, keep a, 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 a tidy place, you know. Think about, you know, visiting someone's home or, or visiting a person's home, and, you know, and if it's, you know, all up in arms and, and, and just, you know, things are overgrown and it's, it's, it's a, an unorganized mess, right? Are you less likely or more likely to visit? You know, I would, you know, 
not not every person's home needs to be you know white glove you know everything has its place like there's 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 a degree i think to um you know a happy mess you know or 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 whatever the term you want to call it is it's you know it's 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 delightfully unorganized you know like there's some like look my house isn't perfect my wife and i keep a a, a decent home you know and there's certain things that have you know, a little bit of disarray but it, as a general rule i feel like it is a welcoming place and i translate that into the the land that i cohabitate with these spirits with is 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 my is the land that i'm on their land to begin with, because again, they were here first, is the land that I am leasing from them, borrowing from them while I'm here for this space and time, being well-maintained and well-ordered to keep them happy. Do they like it? Are they happy? And from my you know, time that I've been here, it's, it's you know, a resounding yes, because there hasn't been a whole lot of turmoil or disruption. You know, because they are kept happy, it doesn't take a whole lot to piss them off, you know? They expect it now. We've, we've set the expectation of it being orderly, calm, peaceful, right? And when things aren't that way, when there's turmoil, when there's, it's well known, you know, we, 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 we get those little nods or signs or whatever, like, hey man, get your stuff together. We ain't happy, you know? Um, now, the ways to keep the Vatir happy. Now, I talked about interacting with them, honoring them. Um, I look at it this way. If I have a friend, you know, somebody that I uh, like, to, like, like to hang out with and spend time with, you know, I'm going to do things with that person frequently. I'm going to, you know, talk to them regularly. I'm going to maybe have lunch or dinner or a meal, maybe a drink go on a hike, interact, right? Do things with each other um, on a regular basis. And that, uh, that behavior, that action secures for us this bond of friendship, right? Um, and when it comes to people, when it comes to our nearest and dearest, our friends, our kin, our kith, right? Um, it, is, it is establishing building and maintaining what we would refer to in the heathenry as um, potentially frith. You know, frith is, you know, there's, there's a senses of obligation, trust, peace, um, all these things. Similarly, not exactly, but similarly, the way that we interact, the, the things that we do with the unseen builds a relationship. I don't think that the same thing applies because I don't, you know, there again, frith is, is mutual obligation. What you do for me, I, you know, uh, I, you know, what you do for me, I do for you. There's this, again, there's this reciprocation thing involved. I don't think the same thing applies to the Vatir per se, um, because they are not bound by the same social constructs as, as humans are. They don't have that barriers defined. They are, they are by all intents and purposes, outside of that inner guard, that that inner inner yard social structure, that social construct. So frith, I don't think is the right word to apply here in that sense. However, there is definitely um, signs that you can read and, and and see omens, perhaps that can be given where hey, what I'm doing is is keeping them happy. Like they 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 they're, they're cool, and they're going to be cool with me, and I'm going to be cool with them, and we have this you know, unspoken agreement, as it were, of as long as things are such and such a way, we'll, we'll keep things such and such a way over here on this end, right? Doing things like, again, taking care of the property, keeping the land looking pretty, right? A appearing pleasant to the eyes. Also doing things like gifting to them. Um, I've made posts throughout time, you know, especially when it comes to like times of, of sparseness, right? The winter, the harsh months. Gifting to the vitir to make sure that they're okay, right? Things like uh, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, right? Things that are consumed by the land, by the vitir, by the physical representations of the vitir, like I mentioned earlier in the, in the saga of, of King Olaf. You know, and that wizard, he's, in, he's a whale, right? He's going around, he's finding all these... The vitir are represented in physical form as creatures of both mythological and natural forms. To the same degree, I feel that the Vatir now 
can be represented in physical form. When we see birds or um, other uh, creatures of the land that, uh, again, not necessarily all, but, but, but can have a uh, place, you know, the, the, the Vaitir take physical form in, the, in, in, in these woodland creatures of, the, of these, these sorts of things. Um, so again, when, when, when it comes to our efforts, our desire to interact and, and maintain good uh, or, or maintain a good standing with the Vaitir, we give to the Vaitir. We, we, we put out food, you know. Um, a lot of people might look at things like birds, uh, bird feeders or squirrel feeders or all these different types of things that give food back to the, you know, creatures that, that we live in and around and that live in and around us um, as ways of establishing, maintaining those, uh, those interactions, those, uh, those ways of honoring the Vatir because it's being received by the land Vatir, by the spirits of the land that habit, you know, co cohabitate with us and that inhabit these, these, uh, these animals. So that's one way I look at it too, is, is, you know, when we look to give to the Vatir, when we look to honor the Vatir, is we want to do things that are going to make the land happy. So, you know, I wouldn't want to, you know, pour, you know, uh, something that is, uh, or, or, or place something that is harmful to the land, you know, um, if I know that a certain kind of um, food product or, or byproduct of food is harmful to the land, I'm not going to put that in the ground. I'm not going to put that out there to be consumed uh, potentially by something and then have that consum the consumption of that thing be detrimental to the life and, and the happiness of that which would consume it. You know, um, I would look to put things out there that are, first of all, you know, biodegradable, consumable by the land in a, in a healthy way, something that gives back to the land, you know, and uh, it, in, in those ways, I feel that that is how we honor the land vitir and keep them happy, keep them, you know, acting in our favor. So that way, when we do things like whether it be agriculturally, you know, um, or, or socially, right, the, the things that we do on the land um, are, we, we, we get benefit from it. We, 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 re we reap the rewards of it. Our, our crops grow healthfully. You know, we don't have an infestation of baleful whites, such as, you know, uh, worms and, and beetles and, and things like that that could wreak havoc on crops, right? We, we are... We are blessed with bountiful harvests and, and minimal um, infestations of, of things that could destroy that bounty. Um, so again, there, there's all physical ways of doing this. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, obviously you're not going to just, uh, you know, try to grow a crop of, of tomatoes and, and not do things that would uh, help prevent things like bugs and, and, and whatnot from getting to it. Because again, the land, the Vaitir that, that inhabit the land, don't operate under the social construct of us as humans. They don't understand. They don't, they don't follow what we follow as, as well. The rules are rules. The wild is the wild, right? And, and, and the laws of nature are, you know, what happens, happens. And you're not going to be able to dictate when and where those sorts of things occur. Um, but at the same time, we have, again, this relationship that we're looking to establish, maintain, and, and build and grow with, um, the, 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 with these spirits that, uh, you know, require us to be active, you know, so we, we look to do those physical things, and then we also look to do the metaphysical things, you know. I've had experiences myself where, um, you know, I was, I was growing a garden at the time, and I was looking to put you know, something back to the land that I hoped would be, be received by the Vaitir as, as a token of, um, you know, a, a token of thanks. Like, thank you for letting me work this land. Here's a gift in return. And, and I uh, would receive an omen. And I, I remember this one particular time, um, just to be very specific, it was um, I was gifting to the land of... Uh, uh, fruits and nuts and some vegetables, some, some, I think I was growing zucchinis and stuff at the time. And I had some 
uh, extra of the crop that I would give back to the land. I would make a plate or, or a portion and I would bring it outside to this um, sort of my little, what you want to call hurger or, or altar as it were, an outdoor pile of stones and stuff. And I, and I, that's where I put my gifts to the Vatier, right? And uh, I sat out there and it was dark, it was nighttime. And I sat out there for a while and I just, you know, in my own way, communicated to the Vaitir, to the spirits that I couldn't see necessarily around me, right? Well, next thing you know, um, I hear this, you know, it was like in a tree line here, near, near the property line, and I hear this rustling in the trees, and I could see through the darkness, the, uh, you know, a little movement. Um, and it was, a, it was a, a possum that was coming to eat the, the vegetables and stuff that I left out there. Now... That's what possums do, right? That's what nature is doing. It's it's the physical act of, of a possum coming to eat vegetables from a garden is a natural thing. You know, like there's there's no there's no real woo-woo, you know, stuff behind it. But in the moment, right, in that moment, that was for me an omen that my gift to the Vitir was being received and accepted, and the the act of gifting to them was met in a reciprocal sort of way. It's I didn't necessarily get anything physical in return, but what I got in return was a nod, an acknowledgement from the Vatir saying, thank you. We receive your gift. We appreciate it. You know, an unspoken yet vibrantly loud and, and a resounding affirmation that what you did is accepted and, and well received, you know. So maybe something like that has happened for you guys, or, or or maybe now that you're hearing about this, you know, and you're looking to implement, you know, uh, behavior that that reflects honoring and, and you know bringing of gifts to the Vatir and, and interacting with them in this sort of way. Again, I'm trying to plant things in your mind to think of uh, every time you see an opossum, every time you see a bird eating at a at a, at a bird feeder that, you know, it's the Vaitir, they're happy. You know, it could just be that the birds are eating because they're hungry, and then, you know, that's what birds do, and that's what they need to do, just like everything else. But, hey, you know, not going to tell you how to read omens, because though they are intended for the people to that, that, are, that are looking for them, you know. Um, just like so many things in nature, you know. Um, I've talked a lot about before about how I interact with some of the wild guardian spirits over here on Stones River, you know. Um, herons especially, um, are, are prolific. Uh, I, I see a heron a lot, uh, and I probably see more than just the one heron, you know what I mean? But every time I see the her a heron, it's, hey, there he is, or, you know, there's the heron. It's probably seeing different ones at different points in time. I, I get that. But for me, it's, you know, you, you guys know I have a very close, you know, affinity to herons for, for, for reasons I've stated before. They are, uh, I, I believe, you know, for me, that it is the, um, that my filier, uh, my, my ancestral guide, my ancestral follower uh, of, of my Algonquin, um, perhaps uh, Shinnecock Indian descent, um, that female ancestor is, is represented in physical form through the heron, because the heron is a marsh bird. The Algonquin and Shinnecock people were marsh native indigenous people. You know, they lived in swamps and, and marshy areas, so there's that connection. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, there's that. And so how you guys read the signs, the omens, whatever, as you, as you have them. I know a lot of people that are friends of mine you know, talk all the time about their, their nature walks, and you know, they see a deer, or they see a hawk, or they see this, or they see that, and they you know, that for them is, is you know, ravens, crows, um, whatever. Um, I know a guy who's, who's very, got a uh, he's got a very close affinity to bobcats, interestingly enough. Um, I've heard of other people, you know, mentioning different affinities to, to different animals. And that, that, that's, that's probably something a little bit different than, than, than the Vaitir. Uh, all I'm saying is that just like we heard about before in um, the Egyo, uh, not Egyo saga, but uh, in the saga King Olaf, Vaitir, the guardians of that land, 
all right, the protectors of that land were manifested in physical form as creatures of both natural and mythological um, stature. So, you know, as a recap, you know, how do we interact? How to honor the vitir? Get out into the yard, get out into your land. And, you know, whether you have a small piece of property, a large piece of property, maybe you live in an area that is like the city and, and there isn't, you know, uh, you don't have a piece of land outside of your dwelling that you can necessarily go to to give to the Vaytir. You know, um, I think that the Vaytir have uh, have presence in the land and then there are Vaytir that have presence inside the home that kind of either... Uh, take up residence in the physical area. Like we, like I mentioned earlier, there was that one guy who had a dream and there was, you know, Vaytir that were connected to this boulder that, you know, don't, don't remove this boulder. Don't tear this down until we move out. Let us relocate before you do anything. You know, so there could be those um, types of Vaytir. And I think there's also uh, Vaytir that, that kind of go with families or that go with people. So you may have, Cases uh, um, or, or, or situations where, you know, somebody uh, who lived in an apartment, you know, their Vaytir, um left with them. Maybe that Vaytir that was with them at that point stayed there. And then, you know, another person moves in and then you've got their Vaytir that, you know, that, that, that traveled with them. And now there's this clash. Like, hey, whose home is this anyway? It's my home. No, it's my home now because I'm living here. And there, you know, you might see tumultuous things pop up. Um you know, maybe we'll call it hauntings or whatever. I don't know. Um, this is just my mind kind of running away with, with the whole concept of it all. But there's something to think about there, too, I think, and maybe a, a topic for a later podcast on on centralized spirits uh, uh, that, that are t- tied to either a family or tied to the home of a family and, uh, you know, why there might be conflict if a family left and, the, and, and that particular white didn't leave with them, and then, you know, you ran into these conflicts. So uh, it also bodes the question, I think, that uh, when, when we go back to, like, you know, talking about land Vitir and, and keeping them happy, you know, if if the land wasn't tended and if the land hasn't been tended or if the land has received a lot of, you know, negative action against it, you know, we talked earlier about these disasters of, 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 you know, incredible magnitude, you know, train derailments that, that blew toxic gas into the air, into the air and leaked into the earth, into the ground, into the rivers and the streams and everything and killed all these, uh, you know, animals and, and creatures that live there. Um, that's, that's heavy duty stuff, you know? Um, and, and there could be, you know, the fact that the Vaytir have abandoned that place and now it's now it's inhabited by baleful whites or baleful Vaytir that that seek to just be entropic and, and destroy what they can. Um, that takes a lot of work. Um, I don't remember if it's in the Lan Nama book, you know, the, 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 the book of settlements. I want to say that it is and I can't cite specifically where it is, but I believe that in the Lan Nama book we, we, we read about land claiming Ceremonies, land taking ceremonies that um, involve the use of fire to walk perimeters of, of lands that essentially stake a claim, right? I am here, you know, banishing any baleful whites to, to then, you know, take over that, that, that space with, with uh, you know, wholesome and good and, 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 you know, the types of, of spiritual forces that you want there and not the ones that you don't. Um, so, you know, you, you, you may encounter, you know, people may be listening to this and saying, you know, I'm having a, a, a rough time right now because um, there, you know, I, I have this sense of unsettling in, in, in the area where I live, you know. Could be, again, not knowing everybody's situation. It's, it's, I don't think there's one uh, universal answer to this. But, you know, it could be that, that the reason why things are feeling unsettled is because the land is, is upset. The spirits of that land are, um, are hurting um, or, are, or have been abandoned, and now it's, it's being taken over by, again, the, the, this baleful 
uh, entropic and malignant spirit. And so in order to regain control, in order to regain uh, then, you know, something of a, of a benevolent um, instead of a malevolent nature, you know, there's work to be done and there is tending to that land that needs to be done, you know, and, and it takes physical work and it takes active action to bring life and bring happiness and bring peace and bring prosperity and, and, and all that back to the land and to, you know, get rid of and to banish that, that which is harmful or, or baleful. So, as you guys think about this, and, you know, hopefully this, is, this has helped spark some conversation amongst your people um, and in your circles, um, I would love to hear down in the comments or, or through email or through the Midgard Musings hotline or through any one of the social platforms, you know, comment wherever you find this, um, write into the podcast, call into the podcast, share your thoughts and let, let, let me know and then let's share with the people everybody else, you know, uh, how you interact with and honor the land Vitir. What are some things that you find to be, you know, integral and invaluable and, and, and to building, growing, maintaining uh, those, those relationships with those unseen spirits that are, although unseen, no less important. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it, and I would love to hear what your thoughts are, and I'm sure everybody else would too. Um, so that's going to wrap it up for today's podcast, this week's podcast. If you did enjoy it, which I hope you did, um, please consider supporting this podcast in any number of ways. You can click the Linktree link that's annotated uh, in the show notes and down in the description. It's going to show you all of the social media platforms that I'm on, and it's going to show you all the ways that you can support this podcast. You can become a patron on Patreon. You can become a channel member on the YouTube channel. You can buy merchandise through Spring. You can send in donations through various methods, PayPal, Ko-Fi, all these different ways of, of monetarily supporting the channel. If you do like what I do and, and want to support in that way, it's greatly appreciated. At the very least, if you don't or can't do any of those things, following, liking, uh, sharing, and subscribing this content is a free and great way to support because the more people that get to see this, the more this channel can grow and the greater uh, impact that we can have, hopefully in a good way, on everybody that participates and, and gets involved. So thank you all so much. Thank you to my patrons on Patreon for supporting me through that way. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you. May the Vatir of the land be pleased. And may your ancestors smile upon you. <laughs>